Hi guys, Dom here, back with another vlog, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm joined by a guest, so guest, please could you introduce yourself, please? Uh, yeah, hi Dom, it's uh, David. Um, most people probably know me these days from Esports and Cider, but previously worked with yourself at Esports News UK. Uh, and I recently started at Millennium, doing their WoW Classic guides, and just sort of all-round WoW Esports, WoW player, really, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, we said before I started recording this, you're more of an expert than I am when it comes to Warcraft. <laughs> I mean, I like my yeah. Warcraft, but you, you you play it and you follow the scene really closely in the competitive side. And um, yeah, it's good to to have you here as well, David. Um, you know, what was it? You worked with us for like two years or more, possibly. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. Yeah, long time. God, first what? proper esports thing, really. Yeah, and it you know you you were one of the first that made the tradition of Esports News UK being known as a feeder publication to Esports Insider. <laughs> yes. So which you yeah. know I can't complain about. I like the guys at Esports Insider, and you know they nickel my best writers. So um, you know, and uh, partly why I brought you on now, I'll be mentioning, I'll be covering like highlighting an article you wrote on Esports Insider. So for those of you watching, I really wanted to talk about World of Warcraft Esports um, this week in the vlog, and in particular, um, uh, something that happened around um, Method, one of the, obviously, the top esports organisations, uh, you know, well known for being a raiding guild, and um, their founder, um, uh, Sko, or Scott McMillan, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, basically, put out a tweet longer um, the other day about the race to world first. Now, if people watching this aren't aware, Method did some real popular um, world first um, boss downings, didn't they? Last last year, I believe, or was it earlier this year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the most recent wow expansion um, with BFA, they've been almost completely dominant um they won all deer um and they won desire law they lost out on crucible storm but it's a difficult one because it was a two boss race mm. so uh, what what kind of happened was with guilds like method and limit the u.s guild and a number of others they have this ability to be the best but also they can put in so much time mm. um with crucible of storm with only two bosses um another european guild pieces um, who actually play on my old server on Draenor, um, they ended up winning. Um, I guess because they could focus more time on it. Yeah. And because there was none of these sort of, you know, early bosses to waste their time on. Mm. Um, yeah, they won. And it was impressive. I don't think anyone really expected it. Yeah, definitely. So looking back, so the two that put Method, you know, that got a lot of um, uh, attention was the world first Gahoon kill. And the world first mythic Jaina kill, sorry, world first mythic kills on Gahoon and Jaina. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mythic, right. Yeah. And they streamed both of these um, events from the Red Bull Gaming Sphere in London, um, which is a great venue. I thought it was really interesting to see that happen, and wow, it really put World of Warcraft like competitive raiding on the map, and made me think, why aren't we seeing more of these top events from you know League of Legends, Dota, and other games like that for some reason the wow one went really well but the reason this is news so i've been um waffling a bit basically the the, the founder of method put out a tweet longer saying why method is not going to be working with red bull anymore around the race to world first and i'll, I'll try and do a tldr and a summary because it's quite a long tweet longer but basically scott says that um red bull he's implying they were getting a bit pushy over time and they wanted to host the future race to world first streams on their own channel and scott was very reluctant to do that because he's he said here and i quote um we see the long-term damage of handing off the 14 year old community run race to world first competition to a third party corporation only the community and or blizzard the developer themselves should have ownership over the race to world first um, more on that below and you know it's clear that method weren't able to reach an agreement with race to world first uh, with red bull and what i found interesting here david is that he's talking about um setting up a cross guild uh, agreement so each guild elects a commissioner to act 
on that guild or organization's behalf and then they'll all sort of reach out to sponsors between them as i understand it and it seems to be that they'd split any revenues in some way you know like a sort of collective um initiative um and then the other day so i'm just bringing up your article now method partners with take tv for race to world first the eternal palace so the eternal palace is the the latest raid right where you exactly, queen yes. ashara yeah. yeah and um you know so they've done this deal with um uh this german platform take tv and that's going to be taking place july 16th so next week um so what what are your thoughts on that david because it's is this cross guild thing happening are you aware of or for now is it just yeah, method have teamed up with tech tv so so basically what method have done is they've approached a number of guilds um the the ones that are confirmed for this event are alpha um g tan hong skyline a version from scratch vodkas and big dumb guild mm. um they're all pretty good guilds um in this light obviously alpha are certainly the standout um i think they're china's number one guild um it's it's a good announcement i mean i think the community has always wanted more guilds involved um the method streams are great but then they end and you're kind of left going well we'll wait until the morning which is fine but uh, there's that disconnect where you're just watching twitter yeah you know I, I found myself the method stream would end and i'd be sitting in the limit discord or sitting in limits twitter just waiting for someone to say something um, there was a few other guilds streaming. Um, the Russian guild Exorcus have streamed, uh, I think, since Method have. They may have streamed before, but it was really it. There was there was like no information. Then Method would wake up, and they'd say, "Oh yeah, so X has done this, and they've been doing this," and but they really just knew what you knew. Yeah. Um, so it was always quite frustrating. And then obviously <sighs> Method won at least the two on stream mm. um and it was great i mean the the euphoria of watching them it was i mean the viewer numbers were incredible i mean is, is this for jaina or gahoon or both yeah i think jaina was bigger yeah um but obviously it had that knowledge i mean i, I missed the, the gahoon one yeah i popped out because i thought oh they, they probably won't do it yet and of course come home to them having done it um, <laughs> but being there for the jaina kill was you know crazy it was a really big thing and i think the wow community really got around it um wow, wow is a really funny game with especially with the esports side because at its core and pvp fans will disagree with me but wow is a pve game the the raiding is what makes wow wow yeah so this community event is almost wow's main esport even though it's unofficial as go said it's it's their community driven thing mm. um which is probably why Blizzard have always been reluctant to get involved, really. Um, they have they added the Hall of Fame for Jaina, or for the Desire Law raid, yeah. where the top 100, what, well, the top first 100 Horde and Alliance guilds basically get like a special title and featured on Blizzard's website. Mm. Um, but that's about it. They've been really hands off. Um, they tweet out from the official Warcraft account, you know, well done method or pieces or whoever. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. Um, I think for all deer they didn't even do that, and I know that annoyed a few people at Method. You know, they basically put WoW on the front page of Reddit for two weeks, front page of you know Twitch, and Blizzard didn't even say anything. It, um, this is Blizzard, isn't it? And this this frustrates me as well because we've seen all this happen with things like Blizzard canning Heroes of the Storm esports, and yeah. um, they've put all their eggs in their Overwatch League basket, so to speak, on the competitive gaming front i mean they do wow arena stuff and but yeah. they don't push it that much even hearthstone like you know how much they've pushed stuff in the past i certainly have they've barely pushed the uk the esl uk um uh, an island premiership hearthstone no. stuff in the past they did it once and it got a massive spike in viewers i don't understand why developers don't push uh the third party um tournaments yeah. more from the likes of ESL and so on um what what do you think will happen with this david because world of warcraft like competitive like the esports side of things isn't super developed blizzard do seem to focus a lot more on the pve stuff sharing sharing cinematics for battle for azeroth and content updates and you know they do support the esports side but the prize pools aren't 
huge from what I'm aware. And compared to other games, you know, would you like to see that change? I mean, of course. I, I think this year is the first year it's changed. Um, now, you know, tinfoil hat, but I think there's a, a connection to the Heroes of the Storm news. You know, literally Heroes of the Storm ended as an eSport. They just killed it one day, which was horrendous the way they did it. Yeah. But within weeks, there was this, oh, there's this new WoW eSports stuff, and here's all the things, and we're going to have two seasons a year. You know, like how League of Legends does it. They split it into seasons, and... And they, they announced all this stuff, and the MDI was going to be serious now. It was It's changed its name to the uh, Mythic Dungeon International, not Invitational. So it got its own league and its own seasons. And they obviously added in-game rewards, um, which you could buy. Uh, it was a, a little uh, guy who changed what you looked like. Um, and then Flags, I think it was. Um, oh, oh was yeah. Oh, sorry. Now, obviously, I bought those because, you know, I thought I'd support them. Um, but the price pool went up. It was it was pretty considerable, um, and I think maybe this is something good. Um, I hope so. There's a there's a lot of people that like WoW esports. Um, I talk to a lot of community people on Twitter all the time, mm. um, and it's something that I'm, I hopefully will write an article about soon um, because I think more people will enjoy it. There's so many WoW fans on Twitter. I mean, when there was a new WoW expansion out. You, you know twitter changes there's a lot of people saying oh i might get it or when classics announced there people are like oh, i'm gonna play this that you wouldn't think played well mm. um so how wow esports has never blown up is beyond me um and i think maybe blizzard have come in a little too late um it feels like this should have happened back in mr pandaria you know we're talking like six seven years ago yeah it, maybe the, the ship has sailed but we'll see maybe they can claw it back but I think it's going to be these world first races that do it, which ironically Blizzard don't really have anything to do with. <laughs> what do you th- what do you think about Method's reaction to the Red Bull deal breaking <sighs> yeah. down? Because for me, they, they've said that oh, I'm going to bring this um, uh, the uh, the quotes back up here again. Yeah. Hang on one second. Um, right, so I'm going to bring. I think, I think what makes it difficult is that it's all one sided right now. I mean, it, it's a long tweet long right this is it's a long read mm. and they're saying a lot of stuff i mean there's that leaked picture that apparently meta got hold of with the red bull worlds first oh yeah that was seems to be one of the triggers for all of this and allegedly red bull have reached out to limit and pieces so limit being the best american guild and pieces who are technically the best guild in the world at the moment um they may have reached out to other guilds as well i know there's been a lot of drama on twitter with other guilds and but it's it's hard. I mean, I think you really need to see what Red Bull announce. I think it's inevitable that this week Red Bull will announce something. Mm. Um, that could be interesting, what they announce. Um, at the moment, we've just got one person's opinion, or one side of the story. Yeah, I've reached out to Red Bull. You know, I reached out to um, a PR that represents them, or at least their gaming sphere, and they, they said they'd pass the question on, but I haven't heard back from them yet, so hopefully I'll get yeah, something... Uh, but I, I know I, I reached out to a few people in a few guilds, and it's just silence, really. Yeah, I, I mean, for for me, David, like I can hear what Scott is saying, but you know, when you look at other esports uh, tournaments and deals out there, where, for example, I think Twitch have paid Psionics in the past for exclusive rights to some of the Rocket League esports tournaments I, I could be wrong there because i don't follow rocket league closely but you know what i mean like uh, i know what scott's saying but at the same time uh, advertising and sponsorships you know, ultimately are, are an, or can be a necessary evil if you want yeah. things to grow and you want more money to come in because scott does talk about um the difficulties for pro world of warcraft players who have to book time off work because totally, you know yeah. They're not earning the money that you know top CS:GO or League of Legends players and so on will earn. Um, yeah. But for me, we need some sponsors as well. You know what? Are you what are your thoughts there? Oh, definitely. I mean, I think the Red Bull factor alone is interesting. I mean, traditionally, Red Bull in sort of traditional sports has never really gone for the normal stuff. They they don't approach the big sports. I know they now own football teams, so it's different. But Red Bull have always had like the X Games. They see like a fringe thing, they take it over. Yeah. Um, like the Red Bull Air Show and things like this. Now I'm not an expert on those, but they probably existed in some capacity before. But Red Bull go in, 
and they just take it and it's their thing now and they did it with formula one oh we don't want to sponsor a formula one team we'll just have one mm. um and i kind of see that being what red bull have done here as well i think they've looked at the world first race seen that it's just a community thing which is a great thing but prior to this expansion it was just people on forums going oh i hope method win or i hope method don't win you know and that was it and i think with method and red bull i think they created a really cool thing that let the community watch something that normally they have to wait ages to see i mean yeah the first kill videos are huge because if i'm like the world's second guild and i'm struggling and then method kills the boss i have to wait for method to decide to let me see it when method stream things it opens up this pandora's box like i can look at it and go oh my god they're doing this yeah this is well that's obviously how we'll do it now and i think that changed things um obviously it was a legacy that will carry on hopefully and we'll see with eternal palace and you know what method are up to it looks good what they've announced there's a lot of people involved mm -hmm. there's more raiders down there this time um but like i said i really want to see what red bull are doing because they must be up to something um, so we'll see i think but yeah um it's a hard one i'd like to see red bull give their opinion i feel like they won't though. I know what you're saying about method. It would be nice to have more structure around timings, you know, when the streams are going yeah. live. They've got a great um, uh, casting presence, haven't they, here? I'll bring up your article again. They've got um, One thing actually preach. That I really, really like is the 24-hour stream. Um, like I said earlier, one of the issues was the stream ended and you were just like, well, I guess I'll go to bed. <laughs> yeah. wake up and they do. I mean, my, my sleeping schedule during the, the last two races was when the method back on, okay, I'll make sure I'm up. Um, but now it's on 24 hours a day. Um, obviously, in theory, they're going to cut to other guilds and they'll mm -hmm. talk over those. And they've said there's going to be guest commentators, um, but they haven't announced yet. So we'll see. We'll see what the non-method stuff is like. Um, but I know that was something people really wanted. Um, people wanted to see other guilds' kills. Oh, let's you know, chop in Exorcist's kill. How did how did they kill the third boss? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and especially when a boss like Jaina, I mean, it took Method 346 attempts. You know, that's, that's a lot. It's the most we've seen for a long time. So I think maybe seeing other guilds' tactics would be quite nice. You know, side-by-side -side pulls. Maybe if the two guilds are in you know, communication, they can say, right, Method are going to pull at the same time as Big Dumb Guild pulls. Let's see how yeah. they both do. Um, and obviously what's interesting with this stream is it will start before Method do. Um, because obviously American guilds get the, the uh, update first. Mm. Um, right now, American guilds have the heroic and normal versions of the dungeon, whereas European guilds do not. Uh, right. So that could be quite interesting. So basically, the method stream will start before method start. Um, That's interesting. Kind of nice, I think. It, it'll be cool to see other guilds doing it first, and then we can watch how quickly they did it. And then if mm. methods struggle, you can kind of go, oh. Maybe this guild might do it this time. It's Maybe interesting. Win, so. It's interesting because, like, Scott talks about it being a community, uh, you know, owned by the community. Mm. He obviously have his interests, and rightly so, wanting to push Method out. So it'd be interesting to see yeah. what the Method stream is like in terms of the balance of focusing on other guilds. I guess for them, they are happy to focus on other guilds because whatever sponsors they have on board, it's going on the yeah. Method stream, right? Or the Take TV uh, um, broadcast. Yeah. So that would yeah. be interesting. Um, and on other guilds, uh, David, unless there's anything else you want to add about that, but it'd be interesting to go on to looking at which UK esports organisations have moved into WoW esports. Yeah, no, I don't think there's much more to say. Like I said, I think we need to see what Red Bull say if they do, yeah. what they announce, but otherwise, let's hope it's a good event. Absolutely. So having a look here, and we've got um, Diabolus esports have recently moved into World of Warcraft um yeah. arena world championship right so they yes. picked up a yeah. roster um I'm, I'm looking at a tweet here from d machine who shares a similar uh, name to yourself <laughs> who works yes. for blizzard um yeah i believe he works for blizzard yeah and yeah well, he works for um gtd tv who are like uh blizzard's i think it's essentially mlg tv right wow basically they do all the production side of things Got you. Okay, so it looks like Diabolus are going to be playing this month, looks like. Yeah, so yeah. Um, 
I believe they they uh, they start in the open bracket. So they've changed this in the last few weeks, but basically they qualify in to the weekend events. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think Diablos were on the stream last time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we've had a bit of an, uh, a change around because obviously the MDI was the last thing that was on. Yeah. Because um, obviously there's now two official WoW esports, essentially. But um, yeah, I, I think it's great. I think it's good to see um, more, you know, smaller teams, quote unquote, getting involved in WoW esports. There are so many unsigned teams, you know, that just have trolley or meme names or you know yeah and i think it's great to see it all picking them up obviously i don't know the process of it but it would be nice to see more teams picking up these guys i mean we saw cloud nine enter it a while ago mm -hmm. um and stuff like that's great method have kind of dominated wow esports for a long time so the competition won't be a bad thing and i'm glad that at least one of them is a uk team mm. and we've got xl esports obviously one of the yeah. top uk orgs now that they've got all their investment money in they're in the league of legends lec mm. which is great and they picked up um a team which is now known as xl's angels yes they've retweeted um a player i believe a player yeah uh Sira or kira i'm not sure how to pronounce it um a couple of weeks back but other than that they haven't been tweeting since january and um, like you pointed out before we went live on the XL website, they only have like the League of Legends team listed and they have said publicly yeah. XL that they're just focusing on League of Legends. When they did their Twickenham Stadium launch, they're just focusing on League of Legends. So I don't know if these guys are dormant. I don't know what's going on with them, but at least they've dabbled in uh, you know, Warcraft, and maybe we'll see them do it in the future. Do you think there's a space for... Because there's been other community things as well, hasn't there? Like this Keystone Masters yeah, tournament. Did you been, watch um, that? So there's a there's a couple of groups um, that have done community stuff. A lot of them are like 6v6 battlegrounds. Right. Um, so there's a, a company, I think they recently changed their name actually, called Resurgence. Um they do a lot of 6v6 tournaments. Mm. Um, I've spoken to them a few times. Uh, I think they've even picked up an arena team themselves, um, which is quite interesting. That's a community team kind of going pro, which yeah. is you know, really fascinating. Um, and then I think you had a former member of their team um, called Darkspawn, or Darkpen, sorry, um, who joined Gosu Crew. Um, right. And then sort of leads their WoW Esports efforts now. And they do community nights as well. Cool. So it's you know it's, it's in... getting serious. I think slowly. I mean, the thing is, if you put prize money there, people will see and go, "Oh, hey, there's money here. That you know, this mm. is a viable option for esports. Maybe what? we should look into this." You know, there's a reason why Cloud Nine have entered. They haven't entered for the fun of it, have they? No. Um, so they obviously see a potential. Um, but like you said with Excel, yeah, <laughs> I know Excel have a WoW guild. I don't. It's not a serious thing. I don't think. Mm. Um, you know, it's just a guild in WoW. So clearly people at XL like WoW. So yeah, of course, it'd be great to see them back. Um, and obviously when they decide not to just focus on the LEC, hopefully we see WoW as the option they take. Mm. And what what um, what are the prize pools, David, do you know, in, in WoW? Because um, the Race to World First doesn't have any, does it, really? No, no, it's just a title, really, you know, and being on Meta's website that you won. Um, but yeah, so... I think the MDI is much smaller. Mm. Uh, this is the sort of thing that you should have sort of pre-ready. <laughs> I think it's about twelve thousand a cup, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's not huge. Um, we're not talking like hundreds. We're not talking six figures here, are we? Like no, some of the majors. No, the full price pool is quite big, it's a hundred thousand, which is you know that's a nice amount. Of right. Money. You know, I wouldn't turn it down. Um, but compared to you know when you see stories about what Dota's pulling, it's uh, a little bit different. Absolutely. Uh, the AWC obviously has um, the community-driven amount of money as well. That's the arena one. Two hundred and fifty. Yeah. In the end. Um, but we haven't actually had an update on it, um, at least as far as I'm aware, um, because there was some sort of mixed understanding whether it was two hundred and fifty grand minimum, mm. and then the community could top it up to five hundred, or if the community were basically paying the two hundred and fifty, and then Blizzard would top it up to two hundred and fifty. Right. Um, but still, it's quite a bit of money um, for a first year at least. And obviously, if it goes well, maybe we'll see more. Yeah, definitely. And I guess um, lastly, uh, uh, David, all the hype at the moment that uh, a lot of us are seeing 
is is around uh, World of Warcraft Classic. I'm certainly looking yeah. forward to that. Yes. Um, what are your thoughts on WoW Classic? Because there seems to be not a divide in the uh, fan base, but they almost they seem. I've I've watched something the other day on Asmon Gold's stream. I think it was where apparently there was some rumor of um, Blizzard's internal teams getting quite competitive and. Blizzard, yeah. depending on how well WoW Classic does, they might move the team of WoW Classic over to live BFA and future yeah. expansions, and they're competing against each other almost. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on Classic and how that will change World of Warcraft? I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I played WoW Classic when it was just WoW. Um, I didn't play it a lot, but I played enough to remember bits. Um, Ragnaros still haunts my dreams. Yeah, same. Um, I did play a Paladin as well, which... You know, in hindsight, is a bit of a joke, but it looked cool to me, so I played it. Yeah. Um, but I think classic's going to be great. I, I think there are people in the community who have wanted it for so long, and there's a reason why WoW private servers were so popular. Mm. And when Blizzard shut it down and they kept shutting down private servers, I had friends that would just wait for the next good private server and would level again, and it would get shut down, and they would level again, and then <sighs> obviously Blizzard famously shot themselves in the foot at Blizzard by saying the famous um, you think you do but you don't won it and, yeah. <laughs> and I think that that killed the community I think they genuinely thought well that's it Blizzard aren't going to do it so Astralis which is the main sort of driving force behind all this they kept going and Blizzard sued them and it went quiet and then we got Classic mm. uh, in another very infamous Blizzard moment of this comment of vanilla ice cream it's a real shame isn't it blizzard ignoring the fan demands has become a bit of a yeah. sad trend and actually if you yeah. think of league of legends right and and dota dota 2 mm. that they were spawned because ultimately blizzard ignored their fan mod for warcraft 3 right defense of the ancients yeah. which exactly. became yeah. dota they ignored it Dota 2 came out, League of Legends came out, and Blizzard thought, oh, we'd better do something on this. Hurried out Heroes of the Storm. And well, it was it's... a mod for StarCraft 2, and like an internal mod. Um, I can't even remember its name, but it was probably just something like StarCraft 2 All-Stars. No, Blizzard. Was that before and... um, Warcraft 3, that then? Was... Well, that was... No, that was before we got Heroes of the Storm officially. Oh, I see, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was an official mod for StarCraft 2, and it just sort of went quiet. Mm. And then we got the amazing as always blizzard trailer at blizzcon for heroes of storm but and i mean unfortunately heroes of storm is basically dead yeah um because they try to be different which is i mean almost unlike blizzard blizzard are very good at taking an idea that works making it better and then being the best at it yeah um, world of warcraft overwatch starcraft warcraft you know but heroes of storm just didn't feel like i'm over i don't think mm. um but yeah like you said they had mobas in their grasp i mean dota 2 literally was there for the taking um, and you could almost see the same thing happening right now at Valve with um, the uh, auto chess the, yeah. the same thing happened so that's the next fight isn't it between the, it those big publishers this, the, and it's, yeah. this, it's the same publishers isn't it although Blizzard don't have yeah, plans today at the moment haven't thrown the hat in the ring mm. uh, I wonder which game they'll pick yeah <laughs> it'd be interesting to see licenses. I mean Heroes of the Storm and is the obvious one but I'm not sure you'll get people to play that again. Mm. Um, maybe stick it in WoW. I don't know how you do it, but maybe I don't know. There's been a lot uh, that have gone wrong with that's gone wrong wrong with Blizzard right over the past year or two. Mike Morheim yeah. Heim left. He was a great. Uh, yep. uh, I don't know if he was CEO or pre- I think he was president towards the end, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, lot of the, the big names have left basically. Um, yeah, and then there was that muck up they did with the Diablo announcement <laughs> yeah, on mobiles and. Yeah. Oh dear! Like some of the it's, decisions it's they've made. To watch, basically. I mean, I, I the first games I remember are Diablo, a Diablo two. I mean, I remember my dad Same. bringing home a demo disc, uh, Diablo one. Mm. Which we probably shouldn't have done because I'm guessing it was probably way older than I was. But <laughs> you know, this is have this community that love them like Valve do, and they just don't seem to be able to keep them on side. It's so so strange. Um, but maybe Classic will change that. The they... classic team at least seem to be listening. Um, they seem to not be offending the community, so hopefully we see a change. Well, they make odd decisions as well, don't they? I've, I'm just bringing up an article I did here um, a couple of months ago. Blizzard rescinds Preach Gaming's invite to Content Creator Summit after banning him. 
over the level in potion issue. Now, if someone breaks a game's terms of service, that's fair enough. But everyone, a lot of guilds, a lot of players, raiders were doing this exploit because they didn't know if it was intended or not. Uh, it was basically that you could stack the potions, right, and you could so, get yeah, more so XP. You sent your, you sent the potions to your character you wanted to level, and um, so items like that stack in you know increments of whatever. But these are twenty, and what you did was you drunk a potion, moved, separated the stack, so the twenty became one and nineteen. Yeah. And then you drunk the one, and then you kept doing it over and over and over again, and it stacked the stats and leveling experience uh, percentage. But all Blizzard had to do around this was, you know, I've read on Reddit and other places and other WoW content creators that um, lots of people would message Blizzard saying, is it okay if we do it? Is this working as intended? Just stone cold silence for about three yeah. days, I think it was. Then they just hit was, with yeah. bans. What, you know, who is the community manager? I know the community, some of the community managers are, but they need to be doing a better job there, don't they, surely? Yeah, it, it didn't help that this happened, I think, just after Blizzard laid off so many people. Oh, there was that um, as well, 800 and something yeah, staff. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of them were community managers as well, especially in Europe, who haven't been sacked yet, because, mm. um, you know, your European labour laws. Um, but it's crazy, you know, people accuse Blizzard of not having a community face, and then they do something like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, they just don't seem to listen. Uh, and it's so strange, because WoW was always that game, you know, They've always listened. But at the moment, I don't know. They just don't seem to. They seem to be letting the community get on with their things. They've got their WoW esports. But it does feel like Overwatch is their main focus. Yeah. Well, for me, if they had undead elves, I'd be happy. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm just happy that I'm now playing Alliance again, quite frankly. Oh, God. On that note. <laughs> we should end it here. No, I, I used to be Alliance at Vanilla, and I, I will be my old Alliance Guild on Thunderhorn and getting back uh, together. Shout out to the Northern Terror. Um, so for WoW Classic, I'll be uh, playing very, very casually because I don't have much time these days. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoard at the moment on retail. You know, on Battle for Azeroth, and um, yeah. yeah, it's all it's it is good fun. It's uh, for me the, the the expansion was a bit was a letdown. I think the story, the build-up, the, the idea is great, but the implementation of it wasn't there. Yeah. We had weird things like war fronts, which for me didn't yeah. work. They should have been pure PvP battlegrounds, yeah. like the old Alterac Valley and things like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Blizzard's issue, I think, with WoW at the moment is they have a lot of ideas that have worked. The Mythic Plus system works, and they keep bringing it back, and that's great. But I think they, they want to reinvent the wheel again, so the island expeditions it was like this idea hey guys we've got this cool idea for this thing yeah. you're going to love it people hated it and Blizzard went well it's too late now so we're just going to more of them <laughs> but the problem is it became the main source of farming your neck and people don't like that feature anyway Yeah. so it's this horrible loop of well, this is the best way to get the thing increased in level that you don't like levelling mm. so yeah and then obviously there's war fronts which people also don't like but 8.2 is better I guess the raids are always good there's one thing that I think this expansion has done yeah. great um, the Battle for Desire Law was a fantastic raid I think almost every boss fight is brilliant Yeah. Um, All Deer was pretty good I think some of the fights are a bit odd um, this new raid looks good uh, we'll find out tomorrow Yeah. Um, but it seems that the underlying systems aren't quite there with WoW um, you know, the art team and the sound team and the world building team they're mm. amazing uh, and the cinematics people, but there's something not quite right in the wild team, I think. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think it's Activision, Activision have got their hands on, you know, more. We've seen it with things like EA and Bioware over the years, where the publisher has a massive influence over the developer. Blizzard are a developer, or at least were in the past, that had this special magic touch to their games, almost Nintendo esque yeah. in terms of this this totally. Blizzard yeah. seal of quality. And that's slowly been eroded away, and we're seeing content come in, which is like the paid-for store mounts, which is yeah. really annoying. You know, you can pay whatever it is, twenty pounds, to get this amazing new um, glowing, yeah. flying steed or something. And you know, back in the day, you would have had to uh, run a difficult uh, dungeon or raid or something, and it had a low drop chance. And when you did get it, like Ashes of Allah, the Phoenix mount, 
Yes. You were amazed by it. Not pay twenty pounds, here you go. And I know that that's creating a disconnect with some of the content creators and the hardcore fans exactly. who, who are shunning that. You know, Asman Gold was saying when you see someone on one of those mounts, uh, spit on them in the game as an emo, yes. which obviously I don't yeah. condone, but it is a game. People play it how yeah. they play it and deal with the consequences. But yeah, that's sad to the, see. The store, the store is a very weird thing. I mean, I kind of understand why it's there. Um, I've seen stories of people who say that they love the store mm. because they can buy people stuff. Like I've watched videos of people saying, "Oh, the store's great. I can, you know, buy friends in my guild gifts and stuff." But everyone else seems to hate them. Um, I don't really like the idea of paying fifty pounds every other year and then ten pound a month or so, and they're also being store mounts, regardless of if I can buy them with in-game gold, which you know they still cost a lot of in-game gold and it isn't easy to get. Well, that's the um, thing, right? It's you're paying ten pound a month to play the game, and then yeah. they're putting other microtransactions in. That's what annoys me. With League of Legends, I don't mind paying five pound here or ten pound there for a bit of RP, get a new skin in the sale, because the game is complete is free to play at its core. Yeah, exactly. When you're charging me ten pound a month, then you want me to pay, uh, you know, twenty pound for a store mount for, or buy for six months of subscription up front and then get a free mount. Uh, you know, I know why they're doing it. They're, they're they're very good Activision Blizzard at making money, but it just I don't think it sits well with pockets of the community. You know, no, it it doesn't. Um, uh, and I know some people will argue that it's because it comes with this six month subscription as well, um, which I understand. The mount is free for the mm. subscription, but in a few weeks' time, once the promotion ends, the mount will go on the store for twenty pounds or twenty five pounds or more. As an individual purchase, so yeah. you know, it's yeah. a strange one. And and I don't buy the whole uh, the the argument that EA have used around defence of loot box recently in front of the DCMS oh, and government nice. and things like that. That it's or 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 some publications that defend it saying, oh, it's optional. You don't yeah. need to do it, but it's like yeah, it is optional. But of the whoever percentage of players that buy those things. It encourages Activision Blizzard and other publishers to do that more in the future and make it difficult for people who don't have much money to enjoy the game, you know, because does, the yeah. best mounts are these new ones you have like to pay twenty pounds for. Tweeted, it also creates this negative atmosphere of a huge content creator who I think as we speak is currently streaming in front of like fifty thousand people right. telling his community, Oh hey, yeah, just spit on people <laughs> now, regardless if you agree or not, that's not great. Because you see people on this mount, and you go, oh, Asmongold, yeah, he, oh, he hates these mounts. So you do it, and then it creates more toxicity in a WoW community that is pretty toxic. Not quite League of Legends level, but it's pretty bad. Yeah. Well, on that depressing note, uh, David, uh, <laughs> all hope is not lost. I, I, I would like to see something happen in the future. I would like Activision to get out, to be honest, and sell it to someone else or yeah, Blizzard to probably. buy it back. I don't think that's going to happen because Bobby Kotick no. in charge is a, quite a ruthless no. businessman from what I've read and hear, so who knows what's going to happen. But listen, uh, David, thanks for your time. I think it's been really insightful. I did want to keep this to 20, 30 minutes. We're pushing 40. Is there <laughs> anything else you want to add before we go? No. Uh, all I'll say is I think WoW's great. I love WoW. I have done for a lot of time, and I'm looking forward to the new raids. I've joined a better guild now. Yeah. Hopefully my old guild don't listen. I love them as well. But... <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing Mythic, and maybe one day I'll join Method. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> um, listen, uh, great to catch up with you again, David. Give us a shout. We'll have to play some Warcraft. Yeah. You know, my gear isn't very good, but I'm always up for casual stuff. I actually don't mind islands just for 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. I like the chance of getting some of the rare items yeah, well, and mounts. Yeah, my friends list, so if I see you in Nagatar, I might pop up and kill you maybe yeah yeah you will because my my <laughs> item level's awful I'm, I, was, I had a i had three three five up until the other day because i just hadn't i just play rp i play role playing yeah, in yeah. it i don't do the other stuff um that much and i think my items level is three four two now which is oh, embarrassing right, yeah, mine's a bit higher so i'll keep an eye out for you <laughs> go on go on what's yours uh well four eleven but in, in my defense which in fairness that is low i my um i've changed character this is a i've re-rolled to a rogue um, well done. Alliance. I um I'm sick of horde cities. I cannot stand that city. It's horrible. Um, I miss Morales. It's lovely. So I'm I'm annoyed that the so I'm in a guild where we have a few undead characters. I'm annoyed that they don't have a home still. 
a blizzard for oh, me. Yeah. They should have given the night elves and the, the undead new homes when when their home when their cities got wrecked. What's what's up? It's been almost a year, hasn't it? Since uh, since that, it's been a while, or yeah, half a it was year. The start of the expansion yeah. story, wasn't it? Really, Especially, well, the undead was. What's going so, on there? Just refugees in Orgrimmar. Because I'd like to see the undead move into Gilneas or something like that, and um, yeah. you know, and then the night elves to move. Uh, I don't know where they'd move, but you <laughs> just know, plant another tree. Just exactly, yeah, plant another, another tree. One. They grow quickly. So. Anyway, um, we've waffled. This has gone off on a tangent, but it's been good because we've covered a lot of things like the Asmund Gold yeah. stuff, the future of WoW, classic, and so on. So I can make this more of a longer yeah, feature. Yeah, we'll do a part two, follow up in a few weeks. Absolutely, I've got a dash. Uh, to Bamington yeah, now, but I'll put this out later this evening. And um, thanks again. I'll share it, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again, David, for for yeah, taking part. Definitely. And to everyone watching, cheers. I'm going to keep these weekly vlogs up. Maybe get other guests on in the future. Let me know if there's a topic you want me to look into, because uh, I'm these vlogs have sort of evolved from me talking to, into the camera to reviewing newsy type uh, features. You know, so. Um, thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, see you again soon.